you see the title of the exhibit, right? Um, what's going to happen is I'm going to discuss six quick points with you, right? Um, the title will come back in a little bit. We're going to get through the disclaimers and things as I speak and all of the licensing, okay? First off, I encourage you all to go to the Library of Congress and research all of their old newspapers. I pull predominantly black-owned newspapers because... This is a series on black and Asian solidarity or black and Asian relations and how to discuss it. Because not everyone's in solidarity and that's going to be okay and we need to be okay with that, okay? Different people think in different ways. So just go through the Library of Congress and peruse through all of their um, archived old newspapers because that's how people once lived, okay? This is where I got this information, mostly from black owned newspapers. I think there's a few that were predominantly white newspapers. I didn't really get much. I tried to find some old Asian uh, owned newspapers, but I couldn't really find that many on Library of Congress. So if you know where I can get some assets to some digital uh, assets for Asian owned newspapers for free in the future, I'll do some coverage on that if you guys can find it. But I'm just not, I'll pay for some, but I'm just not trying to pay a lot of money for newspapers. The title you saw, okay, keep in mind the Blumenbach racial categories. That is still a central theme of that and how different groups of people saw each other in different ways. Again, if you didn't uh, watch my video, Blumenbach racial categories from back 10 years ago or revisiting Blumenbach, this will make sense to you on a surface level, but it won't make sense to you from the point of view of the color cast system. While you may know on a surface level why certain peoples are still suffering and why things are still happening based on historical context, for the series that I've put together, you'll need to understand that color cast system created by Johann Blumenbach. Please go watch one of those two videos. The third thing I want to say is, look, the past is the past. It's bad. I'm not saying let the past go, but I'm going to tell you the past being what it is. People were not um, respectful back then. So what you have to understand in reading these newspaper articles is I'm going to encourage you to slow down the music because these will be played to music because I know y'all don't want to hear me lecture and talk. And because I'm short winded right now and I can't talk for long periods of time. So at least for this presentation. So I played music to it to let you move at your own pace uh, and also to uh, let you uh, pause and read the stories if you like. But with that caveat comes the fact that people of all races and of different backgrounds did and said offensive stuff to people back then did and said derogatory things to people if any of this is triggering to you i apologize in advance but we can't sugarcoat history in the name of people's feelings this will evoke different feelings for different people i would ask you for point number four we're moving into now to to segue off point three, that you take things for the context of its time. Don't get me wrong, you can apply some of these things today, but people were allowed to be more offensive back then. Apologize for the playing in the background. You shouldn't hear that once the exhibit plays because it'll play to music. People are flying their flyer planes. I made this on August 2nd, 2024 prior to um you know putting up the series because i got as far ahead on most videos as possible and last but not least this um exhibit i significantly started it with a black owned newspaper owner william uh lewis eagleson william lewis eagleson is significant to me in that in his 
black owned newspaper, The Colored Citizen, he took a stand on a lot of things. And I think he and another partner, last name Rutherford, I can't remember the first name, were the first black people in the state of Kansas who had a um, black owned newspaper. If I'm wrong about that, y'all let me know about Kansas history, okay? William Eagleson also didn't hold back in his newspaper on how other brown people were being treated. And I wish I could find those articles and I had access to his paper, but now I have to find ways to find more of those articles. So again, this is playing the music, move at your pace. Um, feel free to um, pause it. This isn't to cause offense. It's just to have a greater conversation about things back then. And again, people, this can evoke different feelings in different people. But I ask you not so much to keep an open mind because I have no right to ask you to do that. But I do ask you to um, remember that the reason that you are upset, the reason that you are angry about what you are about to see is because there's a historical context behind that anger and there's historical angst behind that anger. This is just printed history and I picked different things and I wanted you to have your own opinion as to why you think the depictions were put in certain newspapers, okay? Again, these are predominantly black owned newspapers. I gave you the names of them. Go to the Library of Congress and do your own research because I don't do everything for you. All right, without further ado, we're going to go ahead and start the presentation. Thank you.